To the right side of the map, we have the third Terran player in Group A. He had the up and downs. He's playing for Startail. And his ID is... Startail! Former Xenex player. Really? Yeah. A long time ago. Long time before, ago. Before the merge. Yeah. To the left side of the map, we have his opponent. This is a player for TSL. He's a beast online. Once again, he finds himself in the up and downs. Will he prevail this time? It is. TSA Hyun. You know, never underestimate this guy. <laughs> never underestimate him. Uh, and he checks for proxies right away. Very safe play here. It's gonna be very. I feel this is gonna be a tough match for Hack. Hack is great in uh, the matchup against Protoss. Against Zerg, on the other hand, he uh, will probably struggle a little bit with Hyun style because Hyun is. If you just look at his Fight Club statistics at IPL, which is granted an online tournament, but still, he was able to take down so many Terran players. I think he defeated um, Ryang Kumiho, he took down Alive with a 5 0. Yes, he as well didn't have any problems at all with the Team Liquid player. And he sees the command center first. He may go double hatch before pool as a result. He sent this drone out, but no actually starts the pool now. You know, I'm just going down the match history of Jan against Terrence. And he, he took down uh, Rain with a 2 0. He won against Yoda. He defeated BCQD. Every single Terran player that I find in his match statistics lost to him. Uh, he really is very, very strong in this matchup, especially recently. But it's always a bit of a different situation if you play at home or if you play in the booth. And there's this this joke that is currently circling in the TSL team where they all say that Jan is just so good online, but that offline he really struggles and for some reason he can't... He, he just doesn't win the important matches. He yeah. wins everything, but as soon as everything's on the line, he seems to uh, he find himself at a loss and... Uh, he makes some yeah. funny mistakes, uh, creating Overlord drops, for example, uh, doing unusual mutilist strategies in his uh, final round of Code A. Just playing a little bit, uh, a little bit off compared to his online results, for sure. Yeah, this last game that he played against Vampire in the third round, this was definitely a very, very awkward. This is something that he should have won easily with the mutilists that he had on the map and just going for base trades. He came out of the booth and the first thing that he said to me was like, "Ah, oh, I'm stupid. Why did I lose that game? I already won." So he was really upset. But now he has to concentrate. The second thing that he said was like, okay, I want to go back home right now. I want to train for the up and downs. I am going to code as I want to achieve it. But Hack is a good player. Hack is training a lot. He's playing for Startail, of course. And uh, this guy, even though he is a bit better against Protoss, is just such a great player in general. He has a lot of players that he can practice with, and one of them is life. Yeah, that's very true. Something else to consider for Hyun is that he probably prepared for this matchup more than the other ones uh, because he's got more Terrans to face. Yeah. He's going to be playing ZBT more than any other matchup in this group. Difficult for Hack is that in uh, the recent past he lost nearly all his games against Zerg. He lost. He won against Rare. That was one of the games. That was the first round game that he had in Code A. But besides this match, he lost to Monster. He lost to Mia. He lost to Roro. He really struggles a little bit in this. And they actually faced each other in uh, the Korean qualifier for TSL4, and Hyun took him down with a 2-0. Hack also lost to Lucky and was barely able to edge out a win against Lucera in the last uh, Code A season. So this is definitely the toughest matchup for him. Maybe he's able to overcome it today. We're gonna see. Right, right now on Antigua Shipyard, pretty typical for this map. We have him with the attack for the Hellions. He's getting a third command center. And on the other hand, Hyun is now starting a Roach run pretty early on at 35 Harvest. This gets a few more. Doesn't really look like he's going for a Roach Bailing attack, especially with the third base that he has. But we've seen some Roach Bailing timings that can be pretty aggressive, even though there is a third base. Looks a little more like he's going to use those Roaches in order to pressure a little bit and shut down the Hellion aggression. Because on yeah. three bases, without the creep spread with the extra Queens, you need something and Roaches are just a great addition in that case. He's, he's made so many Harvesters that it seems unlikely. He's gone up to 42 that he's going to really commit to this. He uh, doesn't have Lava. Exactly. So, right now we do see Hack baking his wall. He's getting that bunker up. You can see that he's stopped Hellion production. We may just see uh, maybe four Roaches. He's actually going to go up to six here. Seven, in fact. So he really wants to attack with this. I'm not quite so sure how effective this is going to be. We'll see with the Overlord that there's no Siege Tank production just yet. 
If he push to this, then he can he can do some damage. He can break through the wall at the beginning, but he's definitely right now. You can see that he is not adding a baneling nest, and he also doesn't have the resources to really pull it off with the double evolution chamber. It's not going to be some kind of all in. He also has this third base that he's starting to saturate now. The roaches alone will just try to pressure hack a little bit, do some damage, force him to concentrate on this. Whereas Jan, you can see that he doesn't even try to follow it up with shooting. He goes straight for drone production. He just wants to poke. Wants to say, hey. Here I am, I have a few roaches, what are you going to do about it? What is your move? You have to either go for a few marauders, you have to get siege tanks, something along those lines. And Hack is immediately reacting with double bunker. Yep. And... Aliens coming through here do escape. He's got to be so careful with those, uh, because those are like his only way to pressure Hyun right now. Keep him on his Hyun toes. actually has a second set of roaches. He wants to be a bit aggressive, but at the same time he doesn't neglect his defense, which is pretty cute. And the Hellions do sneak by, but he needs to control them consistently. He's always almost losing them. There's just like, the way Hyun zones these Hellions, like, he just can't. He needs to lose all of them with no real damage done. That was insanely good. He has two groups of roaches, traps the Hellions, the Hellions finally like, alright, well I got away, I'm gonna go in here, then boom, there's a queen there, they're already so damaged, he lost them. Really nice control there by Hyun. You know, we are nine minutes into the game and Hyun already has a 40 supply lead. Of course, as a Zerg, you are supposed to have a supply lead, but this is pretty significant. He really did everything right. He has 68 harvesters to 46 now, and uh, with his tech done, the baneliness on its way, gas taken everywhere, Hyun is in a very, very great spot so far. There's no third base coming up for Hack, and he is struggling to get his siege tanks and everything into the game. So, Hyun has all the cards in his hand. Yeah. He is right now really even in upgrades with his opponent as far as 1-1 one, one goes. Two hatches going down, a macro hatch, as well as the interesting 9 o'clock base for Hyun. And this is the, the reason why this map is so tough for Zerg is because it's hard to take a fourth, but if you take a, a hidden one like this that's a little bit risky, your opponent may not even see it. You know, one thing that I want to point out while we're having a bit of a stale mid-game right now is that, guys, the season just started, so what you should definitely do, check out the tickets that GOMTV has and uh, get your season pass. You can just go to uh, uh, gomtv.net slash ticket and uh, just check the different tickets out. There are a couple of really uh, uh, amazing ones if you're low on money as well. But GSL is the league where you get the most games for your money. It's the uh, toughest league in the entire world. This league is crazy. It is insane. So definitely Tell your check friends it out. Too. Tell your friends. People always talk about how you can actually support esports and what you can do. This is one of the things that is definitely worth it, especially since you get so much content for such a long period of time. It's worth every single cent. Yeah. Uh, and you get high quality, you get VODs, it's awesome. Tell your friends, tell your, your brother, tell your sister. Support GOMTV, add them on Twitter, at GOMTV. You can add the two of us, at Carl and at Proximal as well, yep. if you want to support us. And this drop is not going to be supported by nope. Hyun. He says no. Uh, he's got enough units in his main base as well. This is... Oh, he's even going to drop here. Yeah, he's a bit on autopilot. He realized that there were Zerglings, and so he backs off immediately. But yeah. He's just so desperate to do damage. Look at this. He sends a, another group over here. There's already units to defend, though. Uh-oh, the links are not... Look at them not paying attention. He was much more interested in killing the drop. So this uh, this little attack actually did more than he would have thought. And he even uses that little, little cup down there. This is becoming a little bit more effective for Hack. Yeah, very much like you said, though, on autopilot here. Yeah, but oh, it's, that oh. one's so low on hit points. Ouch. He actually stops. He could have just tried to get out of here. But yeah, this is definitely a problem. And just look at what uh, Hyun does. He goes straight for the uh, Hive tech. And usually, Hyun really loves to go for a kind of a bo uh, boogler up here. Is this just something that, that you can... It's it's a matter of preference what you want to do. A lot of players will go for Ultralisks on this map because they say Ultralisk and a Zergling composition are a lot faster. You can react a lot quicker to what your opponent does. It's easier to save your bases, whereas the Broodlords in general are usually the better tech. But this map is one of the maps where it's a bit of a different choice. A lot of players, like the Linox, for example, will still stick with the Brood Lord transition and will not go for Ultralisk, but so far, Jan is focusing on the upgrades for the melee units, which of course also Broodlings can capitalize on, but with him not starting a Spire, it looks like he chooses to go with Ultralisk yeah. in this game. Uh, he yeah, definitely, he definitely is. I mean, he's making 26 bailings right now. He could have spent easily a little bit more, less bad gas on that to get the Spire earlier. 36 bailings now in total. 
And this is an attack that he, Hack is, is really going to be desperate to hold against. This is a reaction by Hyun saying, you gave me so many units for free, and now I have four bases. I am going to attack and kill you. Can he hold here? He's got two bunkers. His tanks are on siege, though, and he is trapped. Oh, God, he's really trapped. The bailings roll in uncontested so far. Oh, God, Yak Hack is dropping in supply. The links are in. There's not even a wall at the front. One last siege tank. It's dying, and GG. Game over. Hyun, without mercy, takes this game. He First saw an win. opportunity. He ran with it. This is just Hyun style in the mid game trying to be as aggressive as possible. And as you said, he saw an opportunity and yes, he took it. Wins the game and therefore MMA, Hyun and JYP are 1-0 in the group. Whereas Alive, Boom Boom and Tag are down. Yeah. So that puts us in an interesting situation here. I love that aggression at the last game there. Just boom, I killed all your units in the medevacs. Cost some using the map. I already feel like I've had this base running for a little while. I've got so much production, I already have a ton of lings on the map. I'm going to kill you. I'm just going to kill you. Yep. And he went for it. He, he had the hive ready for uh, for backups. You know, if it, it didn't do a lot of damage, if there were for some reason like four bunkers and his tanks were sieged up in the nice concave, maybe he has to transition, but that was beautifully done. Yep. And I guess we're going to head into a break pretty soon, but I want to talk about one thing before we start. Um, actually, when I arrived today at the studio, I had a little bit of a present on yeah. my... I, I'm not quite sure what Gom wants to tell me with it. I mean, I found this on my chair. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I have a that. pink bunny pillow. I'm not quite sure if they're trying to tell me, okay, Carlo, you're not cute enough. If they're trying to tell me you have to sit on the on that thing because I'm too short. Do you think I'm too short? No, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, you're slightly shorter than me, but just slightly. Uh, but I don't know what the message is, but it was a little bit awkward. I found this and I'm like, okay, pink bunny pillow. Does something, does my aura say I want one of these? I don't know. Uh, maybe you can come up with a reason, but I definitely wanted to uh, to share that with you. <laughs> yeah, so think about pink bunnies. Yeah, I don't know. That was so random. Think about pink bunnies. Take a five-minute break. Get a soda or something. We'll see you guys when we come back.